Welcome back, my dear viewers, my dear brothers and sisters. So, inshallah, you, you were able to connect the dots. Rasulullah said that I leave with you two weighty things. That if you hold on to them, you will not go astray. Kitab Allah wa itrati ahla bayti. The book of Allah and <coughs> my holy household, and they will not separate. There is a force holding these two together that they will not separate until a day of judgment on the pond of Kawthar. Next hadith, the hadith that we know that the Ahlul Bayt or the Imams are Al Quranun Natiq, Quranun Samat, meaning the Quran that we have that we read. Al Quranun Natiq is Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. He is the vocal Quran. That's two. The ahadith that say that the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam were created from the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as well in Surah An-Nur, مثل نوره Allah نور السماوات والأرض مثل نوره Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the light of the heavens and the earth and the parable of his nur is like that found in a niche. And that hadith of course Imam Sadiq alayhi salam explains that this nur of course is Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. Those who do not understand will continue to say you are over-exaggerating. You are raising them higher my my dear brothers and sisters let me tell you this no matter where we raise them as long as we do not raise them over that limitation which was set forth by Allah or by the Imams themselves they said my dear brothers and sisters don't use this oh this is ghulu this is over exaggeration. You have brought the Imam so high and mighty, my dear brothers and sisters. What you think is so high and mighty that comes from the Imam, not even the closest companions of the Imam, <coughs> have such a status. That when you say, Oh, mashallah, you have brought the status of the Imam so high, I have not even probably spoken. 1% of what the Imam is. Maybe I've spoken about the other less than 1% that the companion might have narrated. <coughs> what you know of Salman today, what you know of Ammar ibn Yasir, what you know of Sayyid Muhammad, for example, Sabah al Dijil, <coughs> or Fadl Abbas, alayhi salam. What do we know about these people? The Imam says, Say about us what you wish, but bring us down do not make us lords that are worshipped do not make us gods that are worshipped and no matter what you say in our merits in this vicinity you will never reach our true status my master i will never understand your true status I will never truly recognize you and understand you. I will never understand where you came from. I will never understand what your true status is to me. So the Ahlul Bayt are the Anwar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Ahlul Bayt are the Anwar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I tell the Mukhalifin, okay, the Quran is Nur. First of all, if you say that is Nur, the Quran is a makhluk. According to the views that you guys have, you say the Quran is something that's always been existent. And of course, this itself is one of those beliefs that the Mukhalifin carry that negate the oneness and the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran is makhluk. The Nur is makhluk. Meaning that the nur is not, has not been existent forever. Only Allah has been existent forever. But according to your view, this will negate your view. If you say that the Quran is, this nur is the Quran, it negates your view that you believe that the Quran has always been there and not a makhluk. If you don't say that, let's say there are some, there are some sects that say that 
ذا قران از مخلوق وش يعسي وش هذا الشيعة ذا قران شيء مخلوق a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the noor that we see around us like everything else it's a creation the quran is a guide too right imam al-imam ali alayhi salam is a hadi and a mahdi he's a guide imam ali is somebody who was always with the haq and the haq is with him you see there's so many pointers that point towards the imam alayhi salam or the ahlul bayt or the imams the 12 imams being the noor and the reason that it's not explicitly mentioned in this in the Quran is because of course fear that if such verses in the Quran were mentioned they may have been dealt with some sort of alteration for the sake of protecting the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced such beautiful terminology that requires our knowledge of the Quran and our eloquence to be able to come to a conclusion the ahadith, of course, are even clearer than that. So, the nur, the nur being a guide, the nur being a creation, the nur being a Quran, and the Quran is like Ali ibn Talib, and the Quran is a Quran in Samut. I mean, all the pointers point towards that this nur, الذي أنزل مع الله سبحانه وتعالى, هم الإمة من آل محمد, and for that reason, we have the following hadith. Which is narrated by Al Kulaini in his Kafi al Sharif. It says, An Khalid al Kabuli, Kal Sa'al to Aba Jafar al Bakr alayhi salam, An Kaud al Lahi as the Wajel, Faaminu Billahi wa Rasulihi wa Nur al Ladi and Zelna. Fakal, Ya Aba Khalid, and Nur Wallah la imata min Ali Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wali Wasallam. Ila yom al Qiyama, Wahum Wallah, Nur Allahu Ladi Unzil. Wahum Wallah, Nur Allahu Ladi Anzala. Wahum Wallah, Nur Allahu Fis Samawati wa Fil Ard. Wallah, Ya Aba Khalid, and Nur al Imamu fi Kulu bel Mu'minin, and Warum in a Shamsul Modi Etta bin Nahar. Translation Abu Khalid al Kabuli, this trustworthy companion, this pious man, comes to Abu Ja'far al Baqir and says, Concerning the ayah in the Quran that believe in Allah and His Messenger and the Nur that, wa that was sent down with them, with Rasulullah. He said, Ya Aba Khalid, the Noor by Allah, Yiqsim Allah. The Imam swears, and the Imams, you don't find them swearing on something unless this something has such importance. Imam al Baqir is an error free, infallible Imam, the son of Ali ibn al Hussein, a Sajjad, the son of al Hussein ibn Ali, the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the son of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, by Allah, O oh Abba Khalid, they are the Imams from Muhammad and Al-Muhammad and they will remain as Imams until the day of Qiyamah. And this also points to the fact that Imam Al-Mahdi is still alive today. You don't just need the hadith of the Ahl al-Bayt concerning that there will be a Mahdi. No. This itself proves because when you see Ila Yawm Al-Qiyamah, because on that day, there will be no more Imam at that time because it will be the time of judgment. We will all be taken to a different dimension, the dimension of judgment day. Then he says, Wahumu Wallah, again he says, By Allah, Nurullah Allah Unzi. By Allah, they are the light of Allah that was sent down. Wahum Wallah, Nurullah, they are the light of Allah on the earth and the heavens and exactly that's what we see they are the parable in the quran they are the ones whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to knock their door when we wish to find guidance nur nur in general light is usually a reference to guidance in this earth and in the heavens the imams are guides so 
no matter where you look at it, it is not a far-fetched idea that the Imams are the Nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are Nur Allah, they are Babu Allah. When you need something, you go to Ja'far ibn Muhammad. And of course here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed the condition that you must follow Allah, the Prophet and the Imams. Meaning what? That this wilaya is a divine covenant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you see how everything is being connected here? Meaning the obligation of wilaya. By looking at this verse by itself, we are obligated to believe in wilaya. Believe in Allah and His Messenger. Let us continue. Then he says, this is beautiful. And it's beautiful that we're doing this in a beautiful day where the sun is out. لِنُورَ الْإِمَامِ فِي قُلُوبَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنْوَرُ مِنَ الشَّمْسِ الْمُضِيئَةُ بِالنَّهَارِ The light, this nur that every believer carries towards Imam. The light of guidance, this very pristine connection that we have with our Imams. The light in our hearts is more radiant than the sun that shines in the middle of the day. <clears throat> and by Allah, they, the Imams, they yunirun, meaning they find for the believers the path towards towards the, the correct path. Yunirun alahum al darb, meaning in that dark and scary path, the Imams will shed a light upon that path in order to paint you the path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, there are many more verses that speak about the divine imama or the divine light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran but since we are coming close to an end there are some ahadith that I wish to narrate some ahadith that are found in the holy riwayat the holy traditions of the Ahl al-Bayt and right now I am I am looking for some of them right now inshallah basically some some reference to the nur but to the to the physical nur and since i am in the vicinity of imam al-mahdi i would like to narrate some some explicit characteristic that imam al-mahdi has just to conclude this episode and i hope you understood the connection from the quran to the imams alayhim salam but here i have here a hadith that is narrated by an naumani and al-mas'udi and others and imam al-baqir alayhi salam إن لصاحب هذا الأمر بيتا يقال له بيت الحمد فيه سراج يسهر منذ يوم ولد إلى يوم يقوم بالسيف لا يطفأ. It says that there lies an effluence of light energy or some sort of energy that continues to radiate from the location where Imam Mahdi was born. And now since we are in the vicinity of Imam Mahdi. I mean, this location could be anywhere. And really, it's the heart that needs to find this location. For me, when I come to Al-Askariyin, it's my second time being at the Askariyin, alayhum salam That location to me is probably somewhere close to Sadab Al-Ghaybah. Because we're not sure exactly right now where the, the birth location of Imam Mahdi was. So when you come to the shrine of Al-Askariyin and you witness something in your heart that begins to speak to you, something so tranquil, you feel as if you're entering complete serenity, complete peace. I mean, I think it comes from the fact that we, we feel that there is this this effluence, this effluence of energies flowing, flowing from this narration. I mean, I don't know how to explain it, but the Sardab, the entire shrine of Al Askari, this area really has something about it that I can say for somebody that has been to Karbala, 
to Najaf, to Kalamain. I have not been blessed to be in Medina yet. But there is something here because it was the house of the Imam. Meaning when I look at Samarra, when I look at Al Askari Shrine, all I picture is a family. I picture Abu Hassan, I picture Abu Muhammad, I picture a young infant, a small Imam, Al Mahdi, and I picture this Imam when he was five years old, when when he was when he lost his father and he began to pray. Somewhere in this area all of this happened. Somewhere in this area you feel something, my dear brothers and sisters. And I, and I crest from all of you, insha'Allah, that I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will be blessed to come to this location and feel, feel this, this. There is some peace here. There, there is peace here. There is peace here that cannot be found in any shrines. And I say this for a fact because, yes, Karbala has a special atmosphere. But knowing that I'm entering the house of Mawali, knowing that I can see and picture a mother with her child, knowing that on days like this, as we are recording this program for you, that the Imam died in this house, it's very difficult, it's very difficult that in the same house he died and in the same house he alayhi salam was buried. I mean, inshallah you will be graced with the attendance of the Sardab al Ghaybah so you can come here and be able to supplicate to Allah for the Lahur of our Mawla. Ajallah ta'ala fardu sharif and inshallah we end by saying may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the Zuwar of Al Askariyain of Al Hussein and Abbas and of Kazim and Jawad and Ali alayhi wa salam. And may Allah protect these beautiful sounds, these beautiful eulogies and lamentations that are being recited during these nights and during every night, either in praise or lamentation of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. I leave you by reciting the dua of Sahib Al Asri wa Zaman. I say, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وآل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين Thank you my dear brothers and sisters والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته